Hello, hi guys. This is C.A. Balakrishna from Lecturepedia.in. How are you? Hope you people are doing well. Even I am fantastic. In the today's class, we will be discussing MTP1 for CA final audit that has been recently issued by the Institute for May 2024 examinations. We will be discussing both descriptive as well as MCQ questions. Okay. I will try to complete this uh, MTP in as much as lesser time as possible so, can, so that you can quickly revise this or go through this without any waste of time. Okay. So, first of all, starting with MCQs. First MCQ. Rohita and coach are accountants mainly into statutory audit and tax audit has received an order in writing from central government in respect of one of its clients to carry out investigation. Rohita and company is contemplating getting the assistance of an expert with respect to certain matters. Okay, with respect to investigation, the Rohita and co chartered accountants are con contemplating to get uh, the you know experts work involved. Now, can Rohita and co take the assistance of experts in pers in per uh, in pursuing the investigation choose the correct answer reasoning from the below basically they are asking whether the work of expert assistance of expert can be used in used in an investigation the answer is yes you can use the work of expert in your investigation if you see option yes 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 rohita and co should consider whether the assistance of other expert like engineers lawyers etc is necessary in the interest of a comprehensive and foolproof examination of documents and information yes option a looks good let us also read other answers yes okay ss 620 using the work of expert has specific paragraph on using experts assistance for the investigation no ss 620 it only deals with audit it doesn't deals with investigation so option b is wrong no no itself is wrong because you can use the work of expert in case of investigation here also no wrong so option a is correct answer next second mcq during the audit of good bank limited the auditors and the management had a certain difference of opinion as to the amount and items which needs to be disclosed under the head contingent liabilities okay however apart from that auditors had observed the following what are the observations first observation 79 agricultural loan accounts guaranteed by government of delhi that means state government in case of state government guaranteed advance you need to treat them as nps if they become nps there is no exemption for state government guaranteed advances okay exemption is only for central government guaranteed advances amounting to 26 lakhs were overdue for more than two years okay that means this 26 lakhs is a npa next 93 guaranteed by government of india that means central government has given guarantee for 93 agricultural loan accounts amounting to 32 lakh were overdue for more than two years they have become npa but since the central government has given guarantee for those npas uh, for those advances those should not be treated as npa until and unless unless guarantee has been invoked and the central government has repudiated the guarantee until and unless this situation happens those advances should not be treated as npas so this 32 lakh is not a npa since it is guaranteed by central government next six corporate loan accounts guaranteed three each by government of india and government of delhi okay three advances guaranteed by government of india that is central government three advances guaranteed by state government okay amounting to 29 lakh each okay each advance is of amount 29 lakh for each company were overdue for more than three and a half months now if you see here since three advances are guaranteed by state government only three advances of 29 lakh each that means 29 29 29 87 87 lakhs becomes npa now what is the question 
what is the total amount of loans that should be classified as NBA by good bank? You need to classify 87 lakh plus 26 lakh. That means 90, 110, 113. 113 lakhs. Option C. Option C is the correct option. Next. Third MCQ. I will quickly read the MCQ. Please concentrate. Sam Limited appointed Mrs. Ajit and Coach Art Accountants as statutory auditor. The statutory auditor found that internal audit function reliable and effective. Okay. The statutory auditor assigned the task of assessing the inventory levels of few branches where statutory auditor believed that there might be some risk of material misstatement to one of the internal auditor, Mr. Krishna. See, those items where there is high risk of material misstatements, those items should not be assigned to the internal auditor. Those items need to be handled by statutory auditor himself. So, here in this situation, the external auditor, statutory auditor should not have assigned this task to the internal auditor. Okay. Since the internal auditor has recently done such assign assessment as part of the internal audit program, therefore, statutory auditor believed that they could rely on the former's uh, report. Okay. Besides this, because of positive of time, the statutory auditors also required Mr. Krishna to help them in some paperwork including the audit documentation. Okay. With respect to audit documentation, this help can be taken by the statutory auditor from the internal auditor. But with respect to assigning the task of inventory verification, which involves risk of material misstatement, that cannot be delegated. Okay. Now, before the audit was concluded, Mr. Krishna got promoted and shifted to another city. During the audit discussion stage, the lead statutory auditor found out that the documentation delegated to Mr. Krishna was not complete. Okay. Accordingly, statutory auditor further checked the inventory work delegated to internal auditor. However, it was found to be satisfactory. Okay. The work delegated with respect to audit documentation was not satisfactorily done by the internal auditor, but work delegated with respect to inventory verification was done satisfactorily by the internal auditor. Now, in this situation, see, in view of above case scenario, state which of the following statement holds true. Let us reach, uh, read each statement. The working of internal audit function was reliable and satisfactory. Therefore, allocation of inventory level work was within the authority of statutory auditor. No, statutory auditor should not assign those works which involve risk of material misstatements. Since in our situation, verification of inventory involves risk of material misstatement, that work cannot be assigned. Documentation would be considered complete as far as the statutory auditor's responsibility is concerned as the missing documentation was because of the oversight of the internal auditor. No. Documentation, you need to make complete documentation. Here in the case scenario that has been given to us, it was clearly mentioned that audit documentation that has been done by the internal auditor is not complete. You cannot consider such incomplete documentation. So option B is also wrong. Since internal audit had conducted the similar inventory level checking activity recently, therefore, because of the familiarity with the audit, the statutory auditor was right in delegating the same to the internal auditor. No, he cannot delegate. The statutory auditor should not have delegated the inventory level checking to the internal auditor as the risk assessed was material. Further, the audit documents are statutory auditor's property and responsibility. Also, the statutory auditor should maintain confidentiality during all the stages of audit. Therefore, it was wrong on the part of statutory auditor to hand over the task of audit documentation to the internal auditor. Okay, even the audit documentation work, it should not be delegated. We thought that uh, since it was a small, some paperwork, uh, it might be delegated. But even the audit documentation, it is a property of the statutory auditor himself. The auditor, he should not delegate this uh, documentation work also to internal auditor he himself has to main, uh, you know make the documentation so option d is correct option just a second
Yes. Next. Case scenario based MCQ. This what we'll do is we'll go through the MCQs because you can solve the MCQs even without reading that case scenario. Wherever required, I will just explain you that portion of case scenario. Okay. See. Since these MCQs can be solved without reading case scenario, I'm going directly to MCQ. Okay. In the above given uh, case, what should be the next course of action on the part of auditors of ABC Limited when the auditors conclude that the reason for management's refusal to allow to send confirmation to debtors is unreasonable and the auditor is unable to obtain relevant and reliable audit evidence from the alternate audit procedures. See, basically here in the case scenario, auditor has asked the management to permit them for sending external confirmation to the debtors but management they have refused the auditor's request for sending external confirmation uh, request in that situation what should auditor do basically in that situation first of all auditor needs to ask the management why they are refusing to send external confirmation and management they will give some reasons right auditor needs to consider the reasonableness of those reasons and the relevance of those reasons and auditor he needs to Try to obtain audit evidence by following some alternate audit procedures. If he is not able to obtain audit evidence by following alternate audit procedures also, then he should consider the impact on the opinion. And if at all it is uh, possible, he can also withdraw from the engagement. Okay, If the situation is, is, is so grave, then he can also withdraw from the engagement if the law or regulation permits. Now let's see. Let us read the options. Auditor should have included the reason for refusal in the key audit matter. No, you cannot give key audit matter because this aspect is having an impact on the auditor's opinion. Giving key audit matter is not a substitute for modifying the opinion. So key audit matter cannot be given here. Next, auditor should have included the reason for refusal by the management in the written representation received as per SA 580. No, you cannot just rely on the written representation. Option C, auditor shall communicate the matter with those charged with governance and also determine the implication for the audit and auditor's opinion in accordance with SA 705. Yes, option C is correct. You need to, com you need to communicate with those charged with governance and you need to determine what impact this will be having on your opinion as per SS 705. Next, fifth MCQ. Whether PQR and co should other to the opinion formulated by PK and co and XYZ and co or explore or alternate options. Basically what happened is here in the case scenario, the client has appointed joint auditors. Okay, three auditors have been appointed as joint auditors. Now, two joint auditors have given one type of opinion, but the third joint auditor, he is not agreeing with the opinion of the remaining two joint auditors. He wanted to give some other type of opinion. Now, in this situation, whether that third auditor should also agree to the opinion of majority of the auditors or he can give his separate audit report. The answer is he can give his separate audit report with his own opinion, but in such report, he should also mention that the other joint auditors have given another opinion in the other report that reference must be given in the audit report even these two joint auditors in their audit report also they should mention that the third joint auditor he has given a different opinion in a different audit report such a reference must be made okay let us read the options pqr and co will have to go with the opinion framed by majority no as per SA 299, you need not go with the majority opinion. Next, PQR and Co. has the option to incorporate a distinct audit opinion paragraph within the common audit report. No, 
common audit report is not necessary you can give different audit report two audit reports you can give okay so common audit report not necessary pqr and co align can align with the opinion formed by the majority of auditors no you need not align option d pqr and co has the discretion to issue a distinct audit report that means a different audit report independently in such a scenario the reference to other audit report issued by majority of auditors should be noted within the other matter paragraph okay in the other matter paragraph you need to give reference to such another audit report given by the majority auditors so that was fifth mcq next sixth mcq in the above case in the above given case what should be the course of action on the part of zmr and company when they found material misstatement which has not been accurately accounted or presented or disclosed in the financial statements of the current year basically in the financial statements of the current year the auditors they have found certain material misstatement in that situation what they have to do let us see ZMR and Co should not pay attention to the material misstatement found in the opening balance. No, you, you can't just leave the differences in the opening balances as it is. Option A is wrong. ZMR company should express qualified opinion or an adverse opinion as appropriate in the in accordance with SA705. Yes, you, you should first of all ask the management to correct them if the management fails to correct then you need to based on the pervasiveness and materiality of the misstatement you need to determine whether you have to give qualified opinion or adverse opinion here you will not give disclaimer because in case of disclaimer you will give when you are not having audit evidence but here in this situation you are having audit evidence that previous year closing balances not matching with the current year opening balances so here you are having evidence you will give either qualifier or adverse opinion based on materiality or pervasiveness so option b will be correct option next next case scenario Even this we can we will try to solve without reading the case scenario. Seventh MCQ. With respect to the fees to be charged for its new assignment, which option can be opted by MN and associates? Basically, this new assignment is with respect to audit of cooperative society. And in this audit assignment, there are two options that have been given to the auditor for taking the fees. One is to charge fees as percentage of net profits or to charge fees of fixed phi not one rupees. Of these two options, which one can be selected? Generally, auditor, he cannot accept percentage of fees as per clause 10, part 1, schedule 1. But in case of cooperative society audits, you can accept the fees based on percentage of profits because council has allowed you specifically okay council has uh, passed a circular allowing you to accept fees on uh, percentage of profit basis in case of cooperative society so you can choose either option one op or option two so option c either a either one or two is correct next eighth mcq mn and associates sought direct assistance from ca ia that is internal auditor as stated in above scenario advise as to whether he is permitted to do so in accordance with relevant standards on auditing first of all we'll see from the case study in what areas direct assistance has been sought i think it is this paragraph first paragraph if you see from here mn and associates asked mr ia to provide direct assistance to him regarding evaluating significant accounting estimates by the management and assessing the risk of material misstatements basically in this area the statutory auditor cannot take direct assistance because here risk of material misstatement needs to be assessed by the statutory auditor himself and the significant accounting estimates should also be evaluated by he himself so here the direct assistance cannot be taken 
he also seeks his direct assistance in assembling the information necessary to resolve exceptions in confirmation responses with respect to external confirmation requests see with respect to external confirmation statutory auditor needs to maintain control over designing the external confirmation request and deciding the parties to whom the external confirmation request has to be sent and analyzing the responses that have been received through external confirmation request but here direct assistance has been sought in assembling some of the information that is necessary to resolve exceptions in confirmation responses so this area in this area direct assistance can be sought so if you again move to 8th mcq let us read the options caia cannot assist mn and associates in assembling the information necessary to resolve exceptions in confirmation responses but he can assist them in assembling the information that is necessary to resolve confirmation responses but option a says he cannot assist so option a is wrong mn and associates cannot ask caia for direct assistance regarding evaluating significant accounting estimates and assessing risk of material misstatements yes in these two areas direct assistance cannot be sought however caia may assist mn and associates in assembling the information necessary to resolve the exceptions yes option b is correct option next 9th mcq as per chartered accountants act 1949 under which clause can is liable for misconduct let us see first of all what misconduct uh, can has done can provides management consultancy and other services to its clients okay it is completely permitted to provide management consultancy services can was also awarded best speaker of the year as gratitude from the institute okay later later on can posted his framed photograph on his website wherein he was receiving the said award from the institute see posting your photo photographs wherein you are receiving the awards or your full photographs is prohibited you can just have a passport size photo on your website apart from passport size uh, pa pa passport size photo you cannot have any other type of photos of you on your website so which clause says this clause 6 part 1 schedule 1 says this so 9th mcq clause 6 part 1 first schedule option b is the correct option next 10th mcq before signing the tax audit report cam sent a registered post to the previous auditor and obtained the postal acknowledgement will cam be held guilty of professional misconduct under the chartered accountants act 1949 see basically you need to obtain or you need to communicate to the previous auditor before accepting the audit but in the case scenario the auditor has accepted the tax audit and before signing the tax audit report he has sent the communication to the previous auditor as per clause 8 part 1 schedule 2 it is misconduct so option d as per clause 8 part 1 second schedule of chartered accountants act he will be deemed to be guilty of professional misconduct whether it is second schedule i guess it is first schedule right not second schedule option b as per clause 8 part 1 of first schedule to the chartered accountants act he will be deemed to be guilty of professional misconduct just a second i got confused whether it is first schedule or second schedule let me confirm i guess it is first schedule only right then b what happened see you 
yeah then b first schedule so clause 8 part 1 first schedule next even this we will try to answer without reading case scenario what was the responsibility of mr rahul when the management refused to remove the said limitation basically in the, okay what we'll do is we'll read the case scenario Sun Chemicals Limited, a prominent player in, the, in India's industrial landscape, has been etching its mark since its inception in 2008. Headquartered in bustling city of Pune, Maharashtra, listed on Bombay Stock Exchange and the National Stock Exchange. So it is a listed entity. Okay. The company has uh, steadily grown into multi multifaceted entity. Okay. Sun Chemical Limited core strength lies in its robust manufacturing capabilities spread across multiple state of art facilities. Company produces wide range of industrial chemicals, including specialty chemicals, performance chemicals, basic chemicals. These products find application in various sectors. Okay, this is about business of the company. RKM and Co, a chartered accountancy firm, was appointed to conduct the statutory audit for financial year 23-24 for the company. Mr. Rahul Dubey was the engagement partner for the said assignment. In the organizational structure, Mr. Rahul noticed that those charged with governance in the company are also involved in managing the ent entity. Okay, those charged with governance and management are same. Okay, during the ongoing engagement of the audit, at the end of the third quarter. See, at the end of the third quarter, during which tenure, already two limited review reports were issued by RKM and Co. Okay, already two limited review reports were issued and the management of the company imposed a limitation on the scope of the audit that Mr. Rahul considered likely to result in the need to express a qualified opinion or a disclaimer. Uh, disclaim an opinion on the financial statements and accordingly he requested that management remove such limitation but management refused to remove the lim uh, said limitation okay this was a limitation that has been put on the auditor okay after completing limited reviews of two quarters and while in the middle of the third quarter management has put some limitation on the auditor whenever any limitation has been put on the auditor you need to first of all request the management to remove that limitation if management refused to remove that limitation then you need to consider impact on the opinion and if at all it is uh, permissible in the situation you can also consider withdrawal from the engagement if law or regulation permits we'll see that after following the due procedures applicable in circumstances finally mr rahul with his engagement team derived on a conclusion that the possible effects on the financial statements of undetected misstatements could be material and pervasive so that qualification of the opinion would be inadequate to communicate gravity of the situation and accordingly he proposed to withdraw from the engagement after consulting with the senior partner of the firm as on 15th november 2023 that means he is withdrawing from the engagement in the third quarter okay and on 15th november means after 45 days from end of second quarter right so whenever you are withdrawing from an engagement after 45 days from the end of the quarter you need to issue limited review report for that quarter as well as the next quarter that is third quarter and whenever you have issued limited review reports for three quarters then you should also issue limited limited review report of the fourth quarter and the annual report okay the entire year audit report for the entire financial year as well only after that you can resign okay this is the requirement as per sebi lodr regulations now in this situation auditor before he resigning he needs to give the limited review report of third quarter fourth quarter and the audit report of the complete financial year now 
in its resignation letter firm mentioned professional preoccupation as a reason for resignation okay before resigning you will give resignation letter right in that re resignation letter the reason that was mentioned was that since the firm is having some other works since it is preoccupied in some other works it cannot handle the audit of the company so we are resigning this reason has been given now let us read the mcqs 11th mcq what was the responsibility of mr rahul when management refused to remove the said limitation let us see option a to determine whether it is possible to perform alternate procedures to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence yes this is one of the responsibility of the auditor if management has imposed limitation however before going for such a certain alternate procedure he should first of all ask the management to remove the limitation right let us say to communicate the matter to those charged with governance and determine whether it is possible to perform alternate procedures to obtain appropriate audit evidence yes you have to first of all uh, you will communicate with those charged with governance see those charged with governance management has imposed these limitations you please ask the management to remove these limitations and even after that the limitations are not removed then you will consider alternate procedures for obtaining audit evidence option b is more uh, clear when compared to option a let us also read option c to determine whether it is possible to perform additional procedure to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence it is narrow option c is narrow when compared to option b to request for written representation from management for the matters on which limitation is imposed and also communicate the matter to those charged with governance no you cannot just rely on the written representation of the management okay because written representation cannot provide conclusive evidence it is just a prima facie evidence or it is just a corroborative audit evidence so written representation can never be a conclusive audit evidence so option d is also wrong so from reading all the four options option b looks good next 12th mcq what was the responsibility of RKM and Co with respect to issue of limited review report at the time of resignation? See, at the time of resignation, you need to give limited review report of third quarter as well as fourth quarter and also the audit report for the entire financial year. If you see, option C is correct, I guess. Limited review report for third quarter was required to be issued and consequently after its issue, audit report for the full year is also required to be issued along with the limited review report of fourth quarter. So option C is correct option. Next. I guess you remember that provision. Okay. If auditor resigns within 45 days, then he needs to resign after giving limited review report of that quarter. However, if he resigns after 45 days, then he needs to give limited review report of that quarter as well as next quarter. And if auditor has already given limited review report of first three quarters, then he needs to give the limited review report of fourth quarter and also the audit report of the entire financial year. Next, whether in the given circumstance withdrawal from engagement was mandatory and if so, what is the responsibility of the auditor with respect to such withdrawal? Yes, withdrawal from the engagement was mandatory in this present situation because management, they refused to, uh, you know, management, they have put limitation and auditor, he is not able to obtain audit evidence from alternate procedure and he also felt that just giving qualified opinion is not sufficient so in the given circumstance withdrawal from engagement was not mandatory it says so option a is wrong in the given circumstance withdrawal from engagement was mandatory and in case of withdrawal as the withdrawal from audit before issuing auditor's report was not practicable or possible here it was not practicable why because sebi lodayar <coughs> regulation says that if you are with uh, resigning or withdrawing from the engagement after 45 days from the end of the quarter you also need to give the audit the limited review report of next quarter and since you have given limited review reports of three quarters you should also give audit report of entire financial year so it was not practicable or possible he was required to disclaim the opinion on the financial statements okay he wanted to withdraw but law regulation is not permitting to withdraw so in this situation he has to disclaim his opinion he has to not claim any his any opinion so option b is correct <clears throat> next 14th question assuming sun chemicals limited to be unlisted company 
whether the reason for resignation by RKM and co was proper. No, the reason was not proper. They have just said that they were preoccupied in some other uh, business. It is not correct. You need to give the exact reason. Okay, they are resigning because management has imposed the limitation. That reason needs to be mentioned in the resignation letter. No. The auditor should have clearly mentioned the reasons for the resignation and resignation letter issued to the company. Option A is correct. Next. Assuming that the auditor proposed to resign on 14th November, that is within, 48, uh, within 45 days. 14th November, means, uh, 14th November means it falls within 45 days from the end of the quarter. In that situation, before issue of limited review for second quarter, then what was the responsibility of RKM and Co with respect to withdrawal from the engagement and issue of limited review report at the time of resignation? In that situation, he can just give the limited review report of that second quarter and he can resign. See, the auditor shall communicate to those charged with governance the matter regarding misstatements identified during the audit that would have given rise to modification of the opinion and the limited review report for second and third quarter were required to be given or no the limited review report for third quarter need not be given only limited review report for second quarter need to be given and you need to communicate with the management that uh, the possibility of modifications to the audit opinion if the management have not imposed the limitation on the auditor entire option a is correct but just this third quarter limited review report need not be given let's see option b the auditor shall communicate to those charged with governance the matters regarding misstatements identified during the audit that would have given rise to modification of the opinion and the limited review report for second quarter was required to be issued option b is correct option next yes starting with question number one while conducting the statutory audit of Tasty Foods Private Limited, CA Careful has planned attendance at physical inventory count of the company from 29th March to 31st March 2024. The company is engaged in business of extracting rice from paddy grains and caters to domestic as well as international market, uh, particularly in Gulf region. Okay, it has its plant spread in area of about 20 acres located in national capital region paddy contained in jute bags of nearly standard sizes is purchased from dealers or agents it is stored in heaps <coughs> sorry it is stored in heaps on pallets kind of wood structures in open area covered by protective sheets and in steel silos basically silos means huge uh, tankers type structures you can say huge containers <clears throat> in the company's premises so this rice is stored in the form of heaps that means all the bags they are thrown at one side and rice is also stored in the silos the company mainly produces three rice brands that is Raja, Shahzada and Badsha okay the process of obtaining the rice from paddy consists of various steps like cleaning of paddy, removing outer husk, uh, outer husk layer from paddy, paddy grains to obtain brown rice, whitening, polishing, grading and sorting, packaging which is accomplished by means of various types of machineries installed in the plant. So all these processes are followed for generating rice. So, here at each of these stages work in progress will be there at the end of year right <clears throat> next the company's management has prepared a set of instructions and procedures to be followed for recording and controlling results of company's physical inventory counting which are listed as under the management they have given certain procedure for conducting the physical inventory counting certain instructions let us see them the physical inventory count process is to be supervised by a responsible officer of a company responsible for storage function See, management has given instruction that the proper officer who is having responsibility over storage function has to supervise this physical inventory counting. 
see if the person who is having responsibility over storage function is given the duty of supervising the physical inventory counting there is a possibility that he might mislead the persons who is conducting physical inventory counting he might have stolen some of the stock and he might manage during physical inventory counting process so the supervisory task for a physical inventory counting should not be given to the person ha having uh, responsibility over storage function instead the person from accounting department or finance department should be given responsibility to supervise the <coughs> physical inventory counting function okay this should be changed you need to suggest to the management to change this next there should be no disturbance to the routine process of receiving goods and dispatch during the count counting time period management has told that during the counting period there should not be any disturbance to the inward and outward movement of goods see basically at the time of physical inventory counting you should not allow any inward or outward movement of the goods because it will cause disturbance to the physical inventory counting there is a chance that that might mislead the physical inventory counting process so even this has to be changed okay during the physical inventory counting there should not be any inward or outward movement of goods which is completely opposite to the instruction that the management has given you need to recommend the management to change this instruction next counting process is to be undertaken by constituting different teams of three members each for counting verifying raw material work in progress and finished goods okay management has given uh, given instruction that different teams of three members each will be uh, you know allotted for conducting this physical verification of raw material work in progress and finished goods okay but it should be even more clear okay they have not given the instruction with respect to how the work will be allotted and once the counting is done what type of markings will be given for the physical inventory that has been counted okay on these areas and who okay who will be selected for purpose of physical inventory counting management should give even more detailed instruction with respect to this aspect next paddy in steel silos is to be estimated using their capacity no you should not estimate the paddy that is present in the containers based on the capacity of the container there might be possibility that the container might not be full okay so you should on the container there will be measurement markings that will be there based on that measurement markings you have to correctly exactly calculate how much quantity of rice is present in that silos okay even this instruction of estimating the rice in silos based on the capacity of silos has to be changed stating that the rice in the silos needs to be calculated exactly based on the measurements that are present on the silos next quantity of work in progress is to be estimated considering the plant capacity as whole no see the work in progress it is generated at various stages as we have discussed in this point so you need to calculate the work in progress that is present at each of the stage you cannot just estimate the work in progress based on capacity of whole plant okay even that instruction has to be changed the responsible officer should ensure that stocks have been counted or verified in all areas okay this point it can be kept as it is so these suggestions you need to make to the management and management instructions are silent about markings that has to be done after physical inventory and they are also silent about the process or procedure that has to be followed for conducting physical inventory okay you should suggest the management to give proper instructions on these aspects also so now let's see what the question is being asked before proceeding to attend physical inventory count process of company evaluate management's instructions and procedures sent to ca careful as stated above you may suggest modification 
addition or removal of such instructions to ensure effective count process okay we have properly verified them and we have suggested modifications if you also want to make any additions you can also add some points for physical inventory counting okay yes next while conducting audit of cgx limited a listed company for year 22-23 ca shristi notices that company has extinguished following material liabilities unilaterally without entering into settlement with the creditors and reported these amounts as gains under other income the details in respect or as under let's see liabilities for purchase of raw material were written back on account of poor quality of raw material and difference in rates this amount is 3.5 crore okay liability towards one of the creditor for purchase of raw material has been written back by the company without any agreement with that creditor without communicating to that creditor okay so they have written back unilaterally next liabilities for capital goods were written back on account of defects in machinery supplied by creditors to an amount of 2 crore rupees see generally if at all there is a liability in the books of accounts of the company either it will be paid off to that particular person or either it will be transferred to third party okay let's say you have to receive certain amount from some other person sorry you have to pay amount to certain other person and that person has to receive amount from your creditor and your creditor has to give amount to you so you three people you can settle this liability in the in that way by transferring the liability it will be settled and another way is by writing off so whenever you write off there should be proper communication with the creditors and based on that communication you need to write off okay if creditor agrees then you need to write off but here in our situation the company they have written this off unilaterally without entering into settlement with the creditors which is against the financial reporting framework so in this situation there is a misstatement in the financial statements right because it is not as per financial reporting framework then that becomes a misstatement now in this situation auditor needs to modify her opinion right let us see what the question is asking the management is of the opinion that these dues are no longer payable therefore retaining these liabilities on financial statements would lead to overstatement of liabilities extinguishing of liabilities was made by company in accordance with normal trade practices and outstanding were written back after stopping dealing with such creditors she wanted to send external confirmation request to such creditors okay auditor wanted to send external confirmation as per sa 501 uh, as per sa 505 to that creditors However, management informed her that sending such requests may be used by creditor as proof of existence of liability. See, if you have written off the liability, why are you fearing that the creditor might use these external confirmation as existence of as proof of existence of liability? If you have already entered into agreement, then the creditor he would also agree with you for writing off since you have not communicated to creditors and since you have not entered into an agreement writing off agreement with the creditor the management is refusing the auditor to send the external confirmation so the reason that is given by management is not valid okay it cannot be accepted so here management is also putting limitation on the scope of work of auditor so here auditor he needs to she needs to modify her opinion now she is contemplating inclusion of above matters under key audit matters in audit report as per sa 701 analyze the situation see whenever you wanted to modify the opinion because of a particular aspect then that aspect cannot be included in key audit matter as per ss701 so here since because of this aspect that is given in the question you wanted to modify your opinion since you wanted to modify your opinion you cannot give the same 
point in the key auric matters. Hope that is clear. So in this way you can answer that second question. Next. Fab Limited is availing the services of Atiya Private Limited for its payroll operations. It has outsourced that is service organization. Atiya Private Limited is service organization. Fab Limited is user entity. Okay. Payroll cost accounts for 63% of total cost of Fab Limited. Atiya Limited has provided type 2 report. Type 2 report means it will be having the opinion on description design as well as operating effectiveness of controls at the service organization okay atia private limited has also outsourced material part of payroll operations to misers rst associates rst associates now become subservice organization because service organization also outsourced some of the functions to miss rst associates now, in such a way that Miss RST Associates is subservice organization to Fab Limited, the type 2 report which was provided by Atiya Limited was based on carve out method specified under SA402. Carve out method means in, in the audit, in the report that is given as per this carve out method, the opinion will not be there on the controls of subservice organization. Okay, it will not speak about controls of subservice organization because it is prepared based on carve out method. If you have used carve in method, then even the subservice organization controls will be considered in that report. Okay, here subservice organizations controls are not considered. The auditor of user entity will not have any idea of the subservice organization control. Now, in this situation, CA Akram. While reviewing the unmodified audit report drafted by his assistant found that a reference has been made to the work done by the service auditor. See, whenever you are giving any unmodified audit report, then you cannot give reference to the work of service auditor. Okay, if you are giving modified opinion, then you can refer to the work of service organization. A service auditor since you are giving unmodified opinion you cannot refer to the work of service auditor that point you need to mention okay because they are asking that only see ca akram hence asked his assistant to remove such reference and accordingly modify the report modify means not modification of uh, opinion okay ca akram is not suggesting the assistant to modify the opinion no he is suggesting the assistant to Remove the reference that has been made to the service auditor. Okay. By removing the reference, you modify the audit report, not modify the opinion. Okay. You should not confuse here. He has said, he said to modify the existing report by re removing such a reference. He, he has not told to modify the audit opinion. Okay. Now, comment whether CA Akram is correct in removing the reference of work done by service auditor. Yes, he is correct in removing the reference to work done by service auditor. Because in case of an unmodified opinion, you cannot make reference to the work of service auditor. <coughs> Next. Question number two. TPX and Co. Chartered Accountants is a large audit firm. It maintains audit documentation both electronically and in physical form. The physical files are neither scanned and incorporated into electronic files nor cross-referenced to the electronic files. Further, there are many instances where audit working papers do not contain details as to whether information was obtained from client or prepared by engagement team. See, there are no proper policies and procedures with respect to documentation as per SQC1 standard on quality control the audit firm needs to establish proper policies and procedures for safe custody for confidentiality for maintaining integrity and for maintaining retrievability of the audit documentation but if you read the question you can find that none of this is followed and also if at all uh, and also the firm should also have policies and procedures for properly scanning the audit documentation okay if they are having a policy of maintaining the audit documentation in a soft copy then there should be proper policy for uh, you know the engagement team should be guided to 
scan the copies of uh, documentation and to properly make reference in the audit files so even that procedure must be established but if you see in the question none of those procedures have been established and in some situations it is also found that see there are many instances where audit working papers do not contain details as to whether information was obtained from the client or prepared by the engagement team okay you should also have the source of document okay you should also have information about source of document whether it has been generated internally whether it has been given by the client or whether audit team they themselves have prepared it or whether the client has got it externally from third party so what is the source of that audit documentation even that is very much relevant which is not being maintained by the entity so all these proofs that there is non compliance of sqc 1 and all this also gives auditor a kind of impact that or all this makes the auditor uh, not the auditor the reviewers to believe that whether documentation has been completed within the 60 days after the completion of audit report okay basically the time limit is 60 days now within 60 days of completion of you know from the date of audit report you need to maintain the or you need to complete the documentation part if all these aspects are not followed okay if sqc1 is not in place then how can you complete the documentation within 60 days okay even that might not have been completed within 60 days so how do you view the above situation from point of view of quality control system in audit firm analyzer basically sqc1 is not implemented there is non compliance of sqc1 and the quality control system in the firm is not appropriate next it dependencies also arise due to system generated reports and interfaces how do such it dependencies arise why it is important to identify it dependencies to develop an effective and efficient audit approach see first of all what are what is meant by it dependencies it dependency you need to explain that generally it dependency will occur when information technology is being used for recording authorizing initiation and processing and reporting of the transaction okay in each of this stage if you are using information technology then automatically it dependency will occur okay organization will depend on information technology for its needs for its information needs now this it dependency can occur in the form of system generated reports okay the information systems they generate various reports and these reports they can be used by the organization for establishing the manual controls and these reports they will also be used by the organization for evaluating performance for conducting performance reviews of the organization also these reports will be used so if the suddenly if information technology stops generating these reports then you cannot uh, you know evaluate the performance of the organization you cannot properly implement the manual control so in this way we have become dependent on the information technology this is one of it dependency and in the same way interfaces basically interfaces are some of the programmed logics that operate between two or more softwares and these interfaces they will facilitate for transfer of data from one software to another software okay so if these interfaces are not there then the softwares they cannot communicate okay the information it becomes isolated so in this way you be, you'll become uh, dependent on the information technology so now why it is important to identify it dependencies see by identifying it dependency you will come to an idea of how much organization is dependent on the information technology and what are various it risks that the organization will face because of this information technology okay you will get an idea of that and how this information technology is integrated into the organization so all this you will understand by understanding the it dependency of the organization that is purpose of understanding it dependency okay 
नेक्स्ट थर्ड क्वेश्चन सी ए ज्ञान इज ए चार्ट अकाउंटेंट इन प्रैक्टिस एंड ऑल्सो ए इंजीनियर बाई क्वालिफिकेशन ही वॉन्ट्स टू परस्यू ए रजिस्टर्ड वैल्यूअर कोर्स एंड वर्क एज रजिस्टर्ड वैल्यूअर जनरली काउंसिल हैज अलाउड चार्ट अकाउंटेंट्स to pursue this course of registered valuer and conduct register uh, and conduct valuation of uh, securities and financial instruments okay chartered accountants are permitted to conduct valuation of securities and financial instruments along with uh, practice you can also do this registered valuer for plant and machinery under the companies act 2013 <coughs> but you, if you see in our situation c a gyan wanted to work as registered valuer for plant and machinery which is not allowed for chartered accountant for chartered accountant only valuation of securities and financial instruments is allowed now comment on above with reference to provisions of chartered accountants act 1949 here he will be guilty of professional misconduct he cannot do you know valuation of plant and machinery because council has not allowed that it is not permissible for the chartered accountant in practice to do valuation of plant and machinery he is permitted only to do valuation of securities and financial instruments okay next third question jagadish private limited is engaged in business of real estate okay the auditor of company requested the information from the management to review the outcome of accounting estimates like account estimated costs considered for percentage completion etc okay included in prior period financial statements and their subsequent reestimation for the purpose of current period see the auditor of the company has requested the information from the management with respect to the estimations that are made in the prior period now management is refusing see the management has refused the information to the auditor saying that review of prior period information should not be done by the auditor see basically here management they they have done various estimations they have done estimations in the prior period as well as in the current period as per sa 540 auditing accounting estimates and fair value estimates as per sa 540 auditor is completely having power to ask for a documentation or to ask for information with respect to prior period estimations also why because estimations they will not be correct okay there will always be certain difference between estimated amount and the actual amount so now in the previous year management would have made certain estimation in the previous year okay and those estimations results would have occurred because we are auditing in the current period and estimations were made in the prior period that means almost one year would have been completed and the actual results of those estimations would have occurred so the current auditor will also be having information with respect to actual amounts now by reviewing the estimations and the actual amounts the current auditor okay by comparing them the current auditor will be able to obtain an understanding of how accurately management is estimating okay and what is estimation uncertainty auditor will be able to obtain audit evidence with respect to estimation uncertainty also so based on this auditor will evaluate the current period estimations of management okay current period estimations of management so for this purpose auditor the current period auditor is allowed to ask for information with respect to prior period estimations hope that is clear so in this situation management they cannot refuse the auditor for providing the information with respect to prior period estimations the information with respect to prior period in, uh, estimations must be provided to the auditor as per sa 540 okay next 
RML and associates are one of the joint auditors of INDB, <coughs> sorry, IND Bank for the year 22-23. While auditing IND Bank, they are analyzing industry data relating to NPAs, okay, in selecting public sector banks as part of risk assessment procedures. So, this is the situation of various banks. There are five banks. Of these five banks, IND Bank is our bank. They have given gross NPAs. Net NPS ratio of net NPA to net advance. Gross NPA means opening NPS that are present in the financial year. And for opening NPS, you will add the NPS of current period and you will reduce if at all there has been any upgradations that has been made. That way, you will calculate gross NPA. And from this gross NPA, if provision for current year has been removed, you will arrive at net NPA. Okay and ratio of net NPA to net advances of the total net advances that you have given how much is NPA how much is the percentage of NPA that is for various bank it is different if you observe for IND bank it is 3.9 percent which is higher than any other bank so higher ratio of net NPA to net advance indicate that bank might have provided less provision okay if bank has provided less provision, then there will be more net NPA. And if there is more net NPA, then the percentage of net NPA to net advances will be higher. So there is possibility of less provision. Okay. It is not that bank, you know, has provided uh, less provision. No, there is a possibility for less NPA. Auditor needs to evaluate in that area. Auditor needs to investigate in that area whether provision has been made properly or not. Now, let us see what the question is asking. Question is asking same. In the above context, what do you understand by gross NPA? We have discussed. And what do you understand by net NPA? We have discussed as on reporting date in the context of financial statements of bank. Okay. As an auditor of IND bank, what inference would you draw by comparing ratio of net NPA to net advance? Okay. The inference also we have discussed. There is a possibility of less provision being provided by our bank. Okay. Next. <clears throat> Mr. Mayank, a child accountant, was auditor of Chiu Limited for year 21, 22, and 22, 23. During the financial year, the investment appeared in balance sheet of the company amounting to 7.5 lakh and was the same amount as in last year 21, 22. Okay, investment is amounting to 7.5 lakh rupees. Later, it was found that company's investment were only 56,000. However, value of investments was inflated for the purpose of obtaining higher amount of bank loan. Comment with reference to Chartered Accountant, 19, uh, Chartered Accountants Act 1949 and schedules there too. Here, the management, they have manipulated investment figure. Okay, investment amount is 7.5 lakh rupees. But, sorry, investment amount is only 56,000 rupees. But management have shown it as 7.5 lakh, lakh for two years. And auditor was not able to find that. See, with respect to investments, you can... You have to evaluate the physical investment certificates. And if they are, if the investments are available with the third party, you need to send the uh, confirmation request. So in that manner, you can easily, uh, you know, get to know the value of investment. By following such procedure, you can get to know value of such investment. But you have not followed such procedure. So you are grossly negligent. And you have not obtained required information. Okay. Not obtained information. So, as per clause 7, part 1, schedule 1, sh sorry, schedule 2 of child accountants, you will be given to be guilty of professional misconduct. And also, as per clause 8, part 1, Again, schedule 2, you will be deemed to be guilty of professional misconduct. And also, as per clause 2, also you will be deemed to be guilty of professional misconduct. Clause 2, part 1, schedule 2. See, as per clause 2, you should, uh, you are not allowed to sign any, you know, statements or financial records until and unless you have examined them 
or your partner has examined them or any of your employees have examined them or any other child accountant in practice have examined them but without examining these investments you have signed the financial statements so you will be guilty of professional misconduct even under clause 2 okay so all these three clauses you need to refer next fourth question the audit report of rare private limited for financial year 22 to 23 was issued by srm and company on 23rd july 2023 however a case was filed against rare private limited on 9th august 2023 with the civil court with respect to an incident caused in its factory on 24th january 2023 the future outcome of which may result into paying heavy penalties by rare private limited which was informed to mr rishabh pande the partner of srm and co if you see audit report date was sorry audit report was issued on 23rd july and the file was the case was filed on 9th august and it is with respect to a incident that has taken place on 24th january 2023 so this becomes 24th january 2023 is before 31st march 2023 so this becomes a subsequent event but it requires a adjustment adjusting subsequent event right now you need to amend the financial statements because you have already issued audit report but that audit, the financial statements they have not been issued to the public so you need to discuss with the management what they are going to do and if they agree to amend the financial statements then auditor will also give amended audit report now let us see what the question is asking mr rishab discussed the said matter with the management yes and it was determined to amend the financial statements for financial year 22 23 okay management agreed to amend the financial statements further mr rishab inquired how the management intended to address the said matter in the financial statements to which he was told that the said matter was going to be disclosed as a contingent liability for a court case to the footnote in the balance sheet with no additional disclosure okay he asked the management how they are going to deal with this aspect in the financial statement management told that they will be giving it as contingent liability for court case in the footnote and apart from this will not give any other additional disclosure see you you, you cannot just give the information that it is a contingent liability you should also give other information like what is the amount involved and when was the case filed okay various dates involved and who are the parties involved so various other information additional information should also be given in the financial statement so that it becomes easy for the users of the financial statement to understand the issue now the management told mr rishab that such disclosures was enough as he would be further going to provide description of the said court case and in its outcome in the emphasis of matter paragraph in his um, amended audit report see management is telling that since however auditor will be giving the complete details in emphasis of matter paragraph it will be sufficient even if we do, do not provide complete details in the financial statements such type of assumption is wrong okay emphasis emphasis of matter paragraph it is not a substitute for the information or disclosures that has to be provided in the financial statements okay if at all there is any disclosure that the management has to give in the financial statements management must give that disclosure they should not reduce those disclosure basing on the assumption that auditor will however give the same in the emphasis of matter paragraph that assumption is completely wrong so in the context of aforesaid case scenario please answer to the following question whether mr rishab on behalf of srm and co has properly adhered to his responsibility in accordance with sa 560 on becoming aware of the court case filed against the rare private limited yes he has properly adhered first of all he needs to ask the management what they are going to do so man he has asked the management and management told that they are going to amend the financial statements and if management is amending the financial statements auditor should also amend its his audit report so this procedure as prescribed in sa 560 the order has completely followed it 
Next. Whether the contention of management of rare private limited is valid with respect to the disclosure of court case in the financial statements. No, the contention of management is not valid. They need to give complete disclosure in the financial statements. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Next question. CTO limited is engaged. Yeah, CTO Limited is engaged in the fintech business. It is a member of few prominent industry chambers and trade associations and has come under mandatory purview of business responsibility and sustainable reporting for the year 2023. The company has submitted inputs on draft digital personal data production bill to concerned ministry during the year 2023. That means company is involving in advocacy of policy okay they have made certain suggestions with respect to data personal digital personal data protection bill okay to concern ministry under uh, during year 2023 that means it, it is under principle 7 of brsr report it had also submitted to one of the industry chambers during the same year certain key inputs on leveraging India's digital public infrastructure for creating solution by banks and fintechs together as it as its task force members on the subject. Considering the above discuss how the above information would likely to be disclosed by the company in principal wise performance disclosure as part of brsr for the year 2023 basically you will be disclosing this aspect in principle 7 okay whenever you are engaged in advocating any public policy you should advocate the same within the statutory limits okay this aspect is dealt by principle 7 and in in these principles you need to disclose in the form of essential indicators and leadership indicators so how you will disclose in these two indicators first of all having membership in various associations and various committees is a essential indicator okay here the question says that the company has submitted to its industry chambers during the same year certain key inputs okay it is part it is part of various association various chambers and various unions so being member of such chambers and associations is a essential indicator and being a member you have also submitted certain information certain inputs to those chambers and certain you know inputs to the ministry during the year so that becomes a leadership indicator okay so leadership indicator uh, essential indicator is mandatory leadership indicator is optional okay being member of those chamber okay you can either submit the inf uh, either submit the inputs or you can also choose not to submit any inputs okay that is optional which becomes a leadership indicator but at least having a member okay being member of so, uh, such uh, associations or chambers is essential okay it is mandatory okay so that way you can give essential indicator and leadership indicator <coughs> Whether information discussed above would require to be disclosed mandatorily. Yes, it needs to be di uh, disclosed mandatorily. Okay, the essential one is mandatory. The leadership one is optional. Next. C. A. Navya is a statutory auditor of Lakshya Limited for the financial year 20-23. In respect of loans and advances of 75 lakh given to Harihara Private Limited, the company has not furnished any agreement to CA Navya and in the absence of the same, he is unable to verify the terms of repayment. See, if the company has taken any loan, there should be proper agreement 
okay without having agreement auditor cannot verify from whom the loan was taken and how much amount what are the terms of the loan what is the rate of interest what is the repayment schedule all this auditor cannot verify without having agreement so here there is lack of evidence to the auditor so uh, chargeability of interest and other terms justify the type of opinion which ca navya should give in such situation here basically the auditor she is having evidence so she will give either qualified or adverse and adverse opinion will be given whether the item is material as well as pervasive if you see here this item is not pervasive okay it is not impacting the other items of financial statements it is only material so you will be giving qualified opinion you will be giving qualified opinion so the type of opinion will be qualified opinion also draft a appropriate opinion paragraph and opacis for opinion paragraph okay in the qualified opinion paragraph you will keep the head heading as a qualified opinion and you will state that except for this particular loan item the in the other items the financial statements they are showing true and fair view okay except for the item that is uh, you know described in the basis for qualified opinion paragraph remaining all other items the financial statements are showing true and fair you like this you will draft a opinion paragraph next moving to fifth question naresh and co chartered accountants have been appointed statutory auditors of suchi limited for financial year 22 23 the audit team has completed the audit and is in the process of preparing audit report now management of company has also prepared dra draft annual report okay the audit in charge was going through the draft annual report and observed that the company has included an item in its annual report indicating a downward trend in the market prices of key commodities of raw material as compared to the previous year however the actual profit margin of company as reported in financial statements has gone in reverse direction okay the information that is shown in the financial statement is inconsistent with the other information so here sa 720 gets applicable auditor's responsibility with respect to other information now the audit manager discussed this issue with a partner of the firm who in reply said that auditors are not covered with such disclosures made by management in its annual report it being the responsibility of management yes <clears throat> it is a responsibility of the management to disclose other information but auditor should check whether such other information is consistent with the financial statements okay now do you think the partner is correct in his approach on this issue no the partner is not correct discuss with reference to relevant standard and auditing the auditor's duties with regard to reporting see with regard to reporting whenever auditor finds any inconsistency between financial statements and other information auditor he should first of all ask the management to make the corrections if management has agreed to make the corrections then auditor need to evaluate those corrections in the other information if management doesn't agree to make the correction then auditor needs to communicate the same to those charged with governance and get the corrections made even if the corrections are not made auditor needs to consider the impact on his opinion okay this is a reporting requirement as per ss 720 next direct benefit transfer is a major reform initiative of government of india to ensure better and timely delivery of benefits from government to people it marks a paradigm shift in the process of delivering benefits like wage payments fuel subsidies food grain subsidies etc directly into bank account of beneficiaries removing leakages and enhancing financial inclusion that is direct benefit transfer scheme implemented by government now the office of cndag of india is likely to undertake a performance audit that is economy efficiency effectiveness of this scheme needs to be evaluated by the cndag audit by the, doing performance audit for block of years in state of some selected social security pension schemes and scholarship schemes under dbt that is direct benefit transfer now what are likely to be the objectives of such a performance audit explain meaning of audit criteria discuss how these can be determined in above case okay they are asking what are the objectives of this performance audit basically under this performance audit the auditor will verify whether proper 
planning and process were in place to capture the data of beneficiaries okay whether all the beneficiaries data their bank account details their names whether they are properly captured for transferring the benefit and whether necessary steps were taken for implementation of dbt in order to delay the in order to avoid delay payments okay the amount has to be paid on time and whether infrastructure organization and management of dbt were adequate and effective okay this would be the objectives of this performance audit and audit criteria refers to a benchmark or a standard against which the performance of our program will be compared to examine the performance of the program see audit criteria or standards used to determine whether program meets the meets or exceeds the expectation okay audit criteria will be used to evaluate performance of our program so that is audit criteria next gem that is e market place which is government e market place is a public procurement portal which produce uh, which provides opportunities to startups entrepreneurs etc to showcase their innovative products and services to government buyers and engage in public procurement okay basically this gem is a government marketplace wherein government will purchase from this portal and various startups and entrepreneurs they can list their products on this gem portal now the government e marketplace special purpose vehicle a 100% government owned and section 8 non profit company under the ministry of commerce government of india has been incorporated under the companies act 2013 to develop manage and maintain gem platform okay this gem platform is being developed and managed by government e marketplace special purpose vehicle which is a non profit organization now whether a firm of chartered accountants can registered on gem portal for rendering professional services to government departments see basically if you analyze the situation this gem marketplace is a website which is developed and maintained by government okay and on this gem portal various vendors will list their products and the government will purchase from the vendors listed on the gem portal now the question is asking whether chartered accountants can list their services on this gem portal or not if you see as per clause 6 part 1 schedule 1 as per this clause if at all you are having any knowledge that there is an impanelment that is being maintained by government or any other uh, uh, you know person you can make a request to include your name in that impanelment but you cannot make roving enquiries of whether such impanelment itself exists or not now if you see whether this gem portal becomes a impanelment you can say this is not a impanelment because here not only chartered accountants apart from chartered accountants various other people are also being listed so it is not a impanelment and also so there is no issue with respect to clause 6 okay you will not be deemed to be guilty of professional misconduct if you list these if if you list your services on the gem platform and also whether it will amount to advertisement if you see the ethical standard board the council it has not allowed the chartered accountants to list their services on third party platforms on marketplaces third party platforms you cannot list your services on third party third party platforms now third party platforms means those platforms which are maintained by other than client those will become third party platforms if you see this gem marketplace it is being maintained by client himself okay government for the purpose of 
purchasing various services for the purpose of its own procurement it is maintaining this platform so client itself is maintaining this platform so it is not being maintained by third party so chartered accountants they can list their services on this gem platform in fact one of the precondition for the government departments to procure services or to procure raw materials from a vendor is that that vendor should have listed on the gem marketplace okay even if the vend only if the vendor is listed on gem marketplace the government can purchase the material or the services from that particular vendor okay that is a pre requirement actually so chartered accountants can list their services on this gem marketplace you can mark this question as important it might be tested in the examination next when auditors report on audited financial statements contains a qualified opinion okay on the financial statements auditor has given qualified opinion but the auditor is satisfied that summary financial statements are fair summary of the audited financial statements in accordance with the applied criteria which other matters shall the auditors report on summary financial statements contain in addition to elements of auditors report described in sa 810 now on the entire financial statements auditor has given qualified opinion but on the summary financial statements auditor gives unqualified opinion now in this audit report that the auditor gives for summary financial statements what other aspects needs to be included apart from those aspects that are described in SA, SA 810 in this situation here auditor needs to specifically state that on the entire financial statements in the audit of the financial statements auditor has given a qualified opinion and why he has given such a qualified opinion this auditor needs to mention in the audit report of summary financial statements why because in his uh, general audit report on uh, entire financial statements auditor has given qualified opinion so this matter needs to be specifically mentioned in the audit report of summary financial statements okay next that is first part of question second part of question if summary financial statements are not fair summary of the audited financial statements okay summary financial statements are not showing fair summary of the audited financial statements in that situation okay in accordance with the applied criteria and management does not agree to make necessary changes what are the implication for auditors report on summary financial statements here auditor needs to give adverse opinion okay for this i have given you a chart if you refer the chart in the you know handwritten charts for sa810 you will find why adverse report has uh, adverse opinion will will have to be given next in a review engagement performed under sre 2400 practitioner relies mainly on certain procedures what procedures auditor will rely in case of practitioner will rely in case of review he will rely on inquiry and analytical procedures these two procedures auditor will perform inquiry from management mainly the prima facie evidence for the auditor in case of uh, this review engagements is inquiry and by performing analytical procedures he will obtain corroborative audit evidence okay and he will also understand the changes in the trends from the previous year by performing analytical procedures now naming such procedures those procedures are inquiry and analytical procedure discuss importance of these procedures in the review engagement okay we have discussed that next practitioners report containing outcome of review engagement in form of conclusion also contains a description of review of financial statement and its limitations which statement in this respect are to be included in the practitioners report okay in case of practitioners report on review engagement he needs to state that this engagement is a review engagement as per sre 2400 okay and this is not a audit engagement so auditor will not provide any opinion on financial statements okay no opinion on financial statements and auditor will just provide a limited assurance 
because he has performed only limited procedures okay he will give limited assurance these points need to be mentioned in the review report that the practitioner issues next cag in practice is desire of is desirous of filling multi purpose empanelment form mef for inclusion of his name in panel for allotment of statutory audit of bank branches web hosted by professional development committee of icai for financial year 23 24 okay he wants he wanted to fill mef multi purpose empanelment form by filling that form you will be getting you will be allotted bank audits now the form requires applicants to upload xml files of their personal income tax returns okay auditors they need to upload their income tax returns along with computation of income in that mef form now during the relevant year for which information is being sought by pdc csz has transacted in futures and options derivatives that is equity and has reflected income from such transaction in return of income as business income analyze the above situation with reference to provisions of chartered accountants act 1949 now basically as per clause 11 part 1 schedule 1 you will be deemed to guilty of professional misconduct if you engage in any other business other than the profession of uh, you know practice of chartered accountancy now if you see ethical standard Bo board it has given permission for chartered accountant in practice to do the training in futures and options on his own behalf but he cannot provide these services to the clients okay so chartered accountant in practice he can trade in futures and option belonging to equity as well as currency okay futures and options belonging to equity and currency that is current currency options currency futures equity options equity futures you can trade but trading in commodity futures and options is commodity derivatives is prohibited you cannot trade in commodity uh, derivatives so here in this situation would it make first of all for the first question chartered accountant is not guilty of any professional misconduct because he has he is trading in equity derivatives second question would it make any difference if caz has earned income from transacting in currency derivatives and commodity derivatives see it will not be any professional misconduct if he deals in currency derivatives but it will be professional misconduct if he deals in commodity derivatives because ethical standard board has not permitted dealing in commodity derivatives okay commodity derivatives means like crude oil or gold derivatives silver derivatives all these they will be coming under commodity derivatives next ca puranjay is performing a forensic accounting engagement involving gathering of evidence in relation to suspected fraud of substantial amount in company okay he is conducting a forensic accounting engagement he has been appointed under terms of contractual agreement with the company okay the company operates in electronic environment while performing engagement his team has gathered evidence from electronic records in enterprise resource planning messages in company's email system and also from system logs and audit trails generated by comp company's computer system okay by all these sources they have obtained evidences now these evidences are gathered for the purpose of submitting in court okay in order to prove the crime however while doing so team has failed to take care of aspects such as keeping record of each person in team gathering relevant evidence date and time of collection and storage of such evidences okay they have gathered evidences but they have failed to maintain data with respect to who has gathered such evidence at what time such evidence has been gathered to whom such evidence has been transferred where such evidence has been stored all these data with respect to evidence is not gathered by the team now since this evidence you will be producing in court as a evidence court will ask for chain of custody that is how this evidence has traveled 
So maintaining this chain of custody is also very much necessary. Since in the present situation, chain of custody, details with respect to chain of custody is not maintained, there is a possibility that this evidence might be rejected by the court. Okay. So what implications it may have on the forensic accounting engagement as such? The implication is that court might reject that evidence and the opposite party can defend saying that chain of custody is not produced. So these are the implications of forensic, uh, implications of above situation. Okay. So by this we have completed discussion of MTP1 that has been issued by the institute. Okay. So by this I will be winding up this class as of now. We will also be discussing MTP2 once it is launched by the institute. And if you want to purchase our classes, you can visit our website lecturepedia.in and you can place your order. So I will be winding up this class as of now. Take care. Bye-bye. See you.